Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we are going to be talking about using infinite series to evaluate integrals. So this is going to be a relatively straightforward video and a lot less complicated than some of the recent advanced integration guide videos that we've been doing just because this is a relatively simple topic but that doesn't mean that um, you know it's going to be super easy to understand the first time, so very excited to make this video. Anyway, one thing that I want to note is that I won't be going over how to evaluate the infinite series that you get while solving these integrals, and the reason for that is because I already have a three-part video series on how to evaluate summations. So I'll go ahead and throw the first one here as a card, and maybe later on I'll do that as well, just because, um, you know, obviously evaluating infinite series is a whole different type of problem, but I do have a, a, a video on how to do that. So. Uh, so yeah, so let's talk about the idea behind this. So first of all, we know that many functions can be broken down into simpler functions through power series or Taylor series, first of all, and also some other series representations that aren't necessarily power series. So the terms of these series are, in general, pretty easy to integrate, especially when you compare it to the original function. I mean, think about it. Integrating x to the n is a super easy function to integrate, while on the other hand, integrating some function like inverse hyperbolic tangent of x is a little bit more difficult. So that's basically the idea that we have behind this. We're going to try we're going to try to use um, our infinite series to break it down into easier functions to integrate. So here's a little example here. If we have some integral of f of x, we rewrite this f of x as the sum of a n x to the n dx. Then we interchange the sum and the integ integral sign, which I'll go over in a minute. So we get the sum of a n times the integral of x to the n dx. And we end up just getting the sum of a n x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So now let's talk about the Fubini slash Tonelli theorem. So this allows us essentially to interchange the integral and the summation, as you can see on the right here. However, there is one condition that we need right here. And that is that if we uh, replace our f sub n of x, our sequence of functions, with the absolute value of the sequence of functions, we require that this still has to be less than infinity and it has to converge. And essentially, so all we have to do is throw on those absolute value bars, check, okay, well, if I evaluate it this way, is it still going to converge? And if it does, then voila, you have this equality right here, and you can interchange the sum in the integration. Now, this also means, this is called the Tonelli theorem, is that if f sub n of x is greater than zero, it's always positive, then throwing on that absolute value bars doesn't do anything, so that means we can interchange the sum in the integral no matter what, as long as the original integral converges. One thing to note is that these are not the weakest required conditions. So the dominated convergence theorem allows this interchange even when the summation or integral with absolute value may diverge. But this is all real analysis stuff that is a little bit above my level. So we're just going to deal with uh, this theorem in for the most part, which will pretty much cover us for any situation. So let's talk about series representations that we want to remember. So right here I have some really common power series. And one important thing to note is um, the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence of a power series because if we're applying these power series in situations where they actually don't apply for example the integral or for example the the power series doesn't converge then that's completely not allowed and you know we'll just end up messing something up so you always have to make sure that you're only using this when um, when you're within an area of convergence so for here for e to the x sine x and cosine x here are the power series um, and they converge everywhere in the complex plane, so you don't really have to worry about that. But most power series have a radius of convergence 1, as you can see right here. Now note there, that there are some differences. For example, for this sum of x to the n, for 1 over 1 minus x, this works only for absolute value of x is less than 1. However, for the sum of x to the n over n, which is natural log of 1 minus x, or actually negative natural log of 1 minus x, this converges everywhere that absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. So. For example, if we have x equals negative 1, or x equals i, or x equals negative i, all of those work, but x equals 1 does not work, and the same is true for these two right here. Uh, and this one, x over 1 minus x squared, has the same radius of convergence as this one right here. So these are really important ones to use. These are probably the, the only ones that we're going to end up using um, in most situations, but in general, the more power series you know, um, the better, just because it, it means that you're going to be able to apply these power series to a ton of different situations. So in general, I would say just try and memorize as many power series as you can, or if not memorize, remember the derivation, because, uh, you know, these are really useful 
um, representations and we'll go over how to use them in a second. One other thing to note is that power series representation can be found for nearly any function so this is not a complete list by any means. Also some functions have series representations completely unrelated to power series so for example hyperbolic tangent of x equals 8x times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of this weird rational thing and cotangent of x gives us this summation and cosecant of x gives us this summation right here. So um, these are other ones always to keep in mind, but of course, um, you know, power series are in general going to be the ones that we're using. So let's go over how to actually evaluate these integrals using infinite series. So it's really a five step process and these five steps are all super simple. So first we're going to look for functions that can be expressed as a series. Then we're going to replace the function with the series representation. Then we're going to interchange integration and summation. Then we're going to integrate each term. And then we're finally going to evaluate the summation. So let's look. Let's see how this looks in terms of math. So one, f of x is a function that we can represent as a series. So we're going to replace it with its series representation right here. Then we're going to interchange the summation and the integration, and we're going to integrate the terms that are inside. So we end up with these terms right here. Notice that uh, when I integrated, I end up I did I got rid of all the x's and I just end up with functions of alpha and beta because this is a definite integral. So we end up with a n of beta minus a n of alpha, and then we just go ahead and evaluate the summation. So again, I'm going to say if you're not sure how to evaluate a summation, I have a video series, three videos long, about an hour in total, I believe, maybe a little bit more, that can go over pretty much everything you need to um, evaluate any summation that we'll see in these types of videos. So let's go over some examples. So first off, we have a relatively classic and easy example. Integral from 0 to 1 of natural log 1 plus x over x dx. Now, we're going to expand this as a power series because I remember just from looking at my list that natural log 1 minus x or 1 plus x has a really easy power series. So I go ahead and plug it in right here. And then I go ahead and simplify because you notice I have x to the n here and then I'm also dividing by x. So I'm going to replace that with x to the n minus 1. Also, I can bring anything that doesn't have x outside of the integral sign when I interchange the summation. And also don't worry, Fubini's theorem is satisfied in this case. So I, I go ahead and bring this entire, all this stuff with n outside because it's just the same as factoring out a constant. So anyway, I just end up with this integral, which is super easy to evaluate. It's just going to be 1 over n. So I end up with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n squared, which is just eta of 2 or pi squared over 12. Let's go over a little bit more of an involved example. So this example, I think, is a little bit better for a few reasons. First of all, notice that uh, so we have integral from 0 to infinity of x squared over cosh of x dx. And this ends up being the integral from 0 to infinity of 2x squared over e to the x plus e to the negative x. Now, the difference between this one and the last one is that there's no function in our integral directly that uh, appears to be easily expressible as a power series. And you'll notice that what we're actually going to do here is do something a little bit awkward. So first what we do is we multiply by e to the negative x on the top and bottom. And the reason we do that is now everything is in terms of e to the negative x instead of e to the x and e to the negative x. So we end up with 2x squared e to the negative x over 1 plus e to the negative 2x. And then we remember that 1 plus x equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative x to the n. And notice that right here we have 1 over e to the 1 plus, or 1 over 1 plus e to the negative 2x. So if we replace x in here with e to the negative 2x, this will actually end up working. Now one important thing that I want to note here is that uh, this power series only converges if um, if x is uh, the absolute value of x is less than 1. So we have a little bit of a problem in our integral when uh, x equals 0 because then e to the negative 2x is just 1. But luckily we don't actually have to worry about that because whenever we have a Riemann integral and um, we're really integrating from the limit as a goes to 0 plus and the limit as b goes to infinity for the top and bottom right here. So we don't actually have to worry about that since we're only tending down to uh, x equals 0. We never actually hit x equals 0. So we can go ahead and plug in e to the negative 2x here. And then we plug this right into the summation and we get this summation right here. Then we interchange the integration and summation. We get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n 
times the integral from 0 to infinity of 2x squared e to the negative 2n plus 1x dx. Now it's just going to be easier to um, go ahead and get rid of this 2n plus 1 in the exponent, so we're going to do u equals 2n plus 1x, and du over 2n plus 1 equals dx. So we end up with 2 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 cubed times the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared e to the negative u du. Now that's just gamma of 3 or 2. So we end up with 4 times the summation. And the summation is actually a value of the beta function, not that beta function with the gamma functions, but a different type of beta function. And this just ends up being negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 cubed, ends up being pi cubed over 32. So our final answer is pi cubed over 8. Now let's talk about floor and fractional part functions. So these are um, relatively common in various fields, not not so much in general calculus, but I know uh, the floor function gets used a lot in computer programming and the like. Um, and the fractional part function as well. The fractional part function is just uh, x minus floor of x, and as you guys know, the floor of x is just the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. So for example, floor of pi is 3, floor of 10.1 is 2, and then the fractional part is just x minus floor of x. Also notably, the floor and fractional part functions are an absolute favorite of integration b writers, so if you're into integration b's, definitely uh, stick around for this part of the video. In order to deal with these functions, the way we usually do it is we partition the region of integration into regions where x is between two integers, then add up the result of these integrations. And the reason for this is because whenever x is between n and n plus 1, floor of x is just going to be n. So floor of x doesn't change while x is within this region. So what we can do is we can split up our region of integration. For example, here, integral from 0 to infinity of floor of x times f of x dx. Sum from n equals 0 to infinity of integral from n to n plus 1 of floor of x times f of x dx. And we end up getting the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1 of n f of x dx because Within this little region right here, from n to n plus 1, floor of x is just going to be n. Then all we have to do is evaluate the integral of f of x, multiply by n, and then sum from n equals 0 to infinity. So here's a really quick example right here from a past video. If we have the integral from 1 to infinity of the fractional part of x over x squared dx, uh, this is going to be the same as the integral from 1 to 2, plus the integral from 2 to 3, plus the integral from 3 to 4, all the way up to n to n plus 1, limit as n goes to infinity, of fractional part of x over x squared dx. So this is going to be just be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1 of the fractional part of x over x squared dx. And then replacing the fractional part of, with x minus floor of x and floor of x with n, we get this right here. And then after integrating, we get ln n plus 1 minus ln n minus 1 over n plus 1. And this is a relatively easy summation to evaluate. We end up getting this limit, which evaluates to 1 minus gamma. So that is it for this video. Uh, now we're going to move on to the practice problems right here. Some of these are from past videos. Some of them are from the internet and from the Cambridge Integration B. And some of it I just made up right now because um, I felt like it. Uh, I'll apologize, I couldn't really come up with very many good problems for this, I'm not really sure why, but here are nine right here, and I also have two extra hard ones once we once you've tr attempted these ones right here. So hopefully you guys were able to figure out all of those integrals pretty easily. Um, if you need any help, feel free to join my Discord, and I'm happy to help anyone with any trouble they're having with these summations and integrals. And anyway, here we have some extra difficult problems. Now, one thing I want to note here is that both of these I did in previous videos. Uh, one of them I did evaluate with summation, and that was absolutely wild. And this one I evaluated with a different method, because I actually didn't know that it was possible to evaluate it using um, a certain, inter certain summation method here that's absolutely wild and very crazy and gives us this crazy summation that I think is just so much fun. So I think you guys should definitely uh, try this one. Um, but yeah, only attempt if you dare because these are extra, extra, extra hard problems. And I guarantee they are going to give you a little bit of a hard time. So remember to use infinite series when evaluating these. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time on the Advanced Integration Guide. Again, join my Discord if you need any help. And yeah, hope to see you next time. Thanks and bye.